Hello, welcome to this Control Web Panel tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss the CWP to CWP migration module in the CWP admin panel. CWP features a very easy to use transfer module that allows you to migrate all data from the home slash username folder, email accounts, aliases, and autoresponders, crons, and MySQL database and users. The process involves a few steps, but is straightforward. To prepare for the migration, First, we have to open the ports and to generate an API key for the source server. Then, we'll use the CWP migration module on the destination server. So to get started, first, we'll log in to our source server. And we have an SSH port to whitelist and a TCP port to open. So first, let's go to the SSH setup to find out what port we're using. We'll go to Services Config in the sidebar and select SSH Configuration. And then here we see that port 4360 is already listed. Now let's do the TCP port. We'll go back to the dashboard and click on the firewall management icon here at the top. And we can quickly see here in the sidebar the open ports. We're looking for port 2304 and 4360, and they're not in this list. So we have two options. We can either whitelist the port or whitelist the IP. Generally, it's easier to whitelist the IP, but it's good to show how to add the port as well. So let's go ahead and add it. So here in the Configuration button, we'll click this drop-down, and we'll click on Main Configuration. And this opens the CSF Firewall Configuration file. And we'll just scroll down a little bit here until we get to the port settings here. And we are looking for the TCP in and out. So here we can just add comma 2304 comma 4360 for the TCP incoming. And then same thing for TCP outgoing. We'll just add comma 2304 comma 4360. And then scroll down to the bottom and save our changes. And then we go back to the dashboard, back to the firewall manager and here we can see the new ports added to our open ports, but before these changes take place, we have to restart our firewall. So we can do that here in the restart menu, click restart firewall. And then we can go back and our changes will take effect. Now, if you have a custom firewall on the network or NAT networking routing, then you'll need to either open the port there as well, or set up port forwarding on the server management panel for the server provider, like for example, AWS. If you run into any problems opening this port, an alternative is whitelisting the destination server. So to do that, you can just scroll down here to the whitelist configuration and simply add an entry. And here you can add the IP of the destination server and add and to commit the changes you should restart the firewall first so you can either quick restart the firewall by pressing this button here or up at the top you can select restart firewall from the restart drop down and now when we go back we can see that our ports are open and that our whitelist configuration includes our destination server. If you whitelist the destination server, then you don't need to open the port. But this is only the case if you're only using the CWP default CSF firewall. If you have a server with Amazon S3, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, or etc., then you would also need to set up in the management of that server port forwarding and or open the port. So now that we've opened up our ports, let's set up an API access. So in the sidebar here, let's select CWP settings and right at the bottom of this submenu is the API manager. We'll select that. And right at the top here, we will click the allow new API access button. Here we'll give our API a name. Then we'll input the origin IP authorized to use this key. 
And if we have a key code already, we can enter that here. Otherwise, we can click the Generate button and CWP will generate a key for us. For the format request, we have the option to say either JSON or XML. However, for CWP to CWP migration, we should be using the JSON format. So select JSON. And for owner, we need to select a user with administrative privileges. So we'll select root here. And now it's time to add our API functions. And as you can see, there are a variety of functions and modifiers here, including add, update, delete, list, suspend, and unsuspend. But CWP has an easy way to fill this out. And you'll see two buttons here. One is CWP to CWP, and the other is WHMCS. So since we're migrating CWP to CWP, we'll just select this and automatically all of our API functions are automatically enabled. Everything that we need is done here for us. So once we're ready, we can just click create. And our new API access key is added to our table here. And we can see the migration tutorial right here. And next we have to generate an SSH key. So over in the sidebar here, under the server settings, we will select SSH key generator. And we'll just scroll right to the bottom. And we have the option to generate new keys. And this will generate new SSH private and public keys and note that it will overwrite old files if they exist. So let's go ahead and click the button to generate new keys and confirm OK. And here's our new keys. And then we'll go ahead and scroll back down and click add public key to authorized and click OK. Now there is a way that we can confirm the SSH connection by using an SSH command from this remote server. And that would be using the command SSH username at IP P port. If the login is successful without requesting a password, then we've successfully logged in using the key. If successful, we can then use this command to return the username. SSH root at IP dash P 222 quotes, who am I, end quote. This should return an output of root, since this is the username that we used. If the output matches our username, then everything's okay. Otherwise, there might be some error. Now that we've opened our ports and generated our keys, let's head to the destination server. So first, let's whitelist our origin IP. So we'll go here to the firewall manager. And then down under the whitelist configuration, we'll select add an entry. And then here we will input the IP of our origin source server and then click add. And for the changes to take place, we either have to restart through the menu here, or we can use the quick restart firewall button here. And now we can go back. And we see that our origin source server has now been whitelisted. So now let's go to the user accounts submenu in the sidebar and select CWP to CWP migration. And here we'll input the remote server information, starting with the IP and the username with admin access and the admin password, the port we'll be using, 4360. And then we need the API key. So we'll go back to our remote server. And here is our key. Paste that there. And we can also set the maximum simultaneous transfers. In this case, one is fine. And once everything is input, we can test and save. And we have a successful connection. And this automatically opens the remote server list where we can see a list of the server IPs that we have access to. And for reference, there is a handy link here for instructions for migrating all the accounts from a CWP server. To get started, just select the server IP from the remote server list that you want to migrate from. And this opens up a complete list of all of the packages and accounts on your old server, on the source server, that you can transfer from.
Any packages or accounts that have already been transferred will show an icon like this that says transferred. Reseller accounts and any suspended accounts will also be indicated. All you need to do is select any packages or accounts that you want to transfer and then click the Start Migration button. And you'll see the account transfer in real time along with the migration logs. While this is running, you can perform other operations on your server and the migration will continue to run in the background. You can return to the module anytime to see the status of your current migration. If you'd like to review your transfer logs, you can do so from the sidebar. Just scroll down to File Management and select your CWP Log Viewer. And for the log file, you can select Account Transfer. And then search. And here you'll see the most recent lines of your transfer. For more information on how to use the CWP to CWP migration module, please visit the following link. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks very much for watching.